Lord Jehovah, we thank you for this week's moment of truth. Thank you for previous series. Thank you for everyone you have used to be part of this program. It's Yusuf Yakubu Fise coming all the way from Mount Carmel Christian Concert with the moment of truth to our listeners, to our followers, and our viewers. Let's have some prayers before we begin. Father, we thank you for a moment like this to share the truth of your gospel, the truth that delivers, the truth that sets free. Holy Spirit, brood over this message. Cause it to be a blessing to families, to children of yours that ought to return home and be part of you and call you Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Fellow viewers, last week we talked about anointed locations for promotion. Indeed, I believe you were so blessed. I am also blessed. This week, our topic is, who is your father? Who is your father? A funny question, isn't it? Because every one of us has a father, and we value our fathers. But this question is inherent. It's very, very important that we look into that. Because the Spirit of God wants us to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. The question of who is a father, or who is your father, it's so important, and it's been all through history. You can't believe it. The reason why you're where you are is because of your background. And today we're going to go into the scriptures and then see that this question, who is your father, also was asked severally in the scriptures. It is not prowess or chance that sometimes would define who a man is. But your background and so we see that in the previous series we said location will determine the height you will go in life now remember in the other previous series we talked about escaping from the capital there are doldrums there are situations that are so tough that men women find themselves in children find themselves in the ability to get out of those terrible situations is determined by the insider that leads them. We talked about the insider. But now again, not everybody has an insider. Insiders are sent by fathers. Insiders are made available as a result of who is your father. The best insider will come from the best father. The influence of your father around will determine the sort of insiders you're going to be having. And so today, we want to look at it very, very well. Having in mind that location determines your height in life. And again, the secret about location is that your location will determine the rights that are conferred upon you. When we talk about territories, we talk about countries, they mean much more than geographical location. When you say you belong to a given country, you belong to a given territory, there are rights, there are obligations that are conferred upon a citizen. And we're going to see that today. The influence of citizenship rights on citizens. As it is in the practical, so it is in the spiritual realm. We have territories. We have principalities. We have provinces, even in the spiritual realm. And so where you are located right now will determine your height. It will determine the rights that are accorded to you. Let's take some simple examples from the scripture. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 58, we hear King Saul asking the question. In fact, it begins from verse 55. When David killed Goliath, he became so popular. 
But then his prowess of killing Goliath did not mean anything. The first question the king, King Saul, asked was, Who is the father of this young man? Abner, the commander, very close to King Saul, said himself, he said, As my Lord liveth, I do not know whose son is this. You see, life is very funny. Sometimes you think your ability to do great exploits will determine how far you're going to go. No, David had killed Goliath. He was only known to heaven and by him because of the anointing upon him. Men didn't know his background. The king had to ask. The commander to the king's army had to even declare that he never knew who David was. You see, sometimes we do things and we expect that people know who we are. We begin to beat our chest and think, oh, we are so well known. No. But the most important thing is that you are known in heaven. Your name is in the record of heroes of the kingdom of God. Now, let's move further. In verse 58, King Saul had to ask David, he said, my young friend, whose son are you? And David said, my lord. I am the son of Jesse, thy servant. It means that Jesse was virtually irrelevant in Israel. Nobody knew him. And he was a servant to King Saul. Well, anybody within the territory of a king is time to be a subject or a servant. David said, my father is your servant. This was the first time much will be known about Jesse. So you see the question, who is your father, is very relevant. And we're going to see that today. Take a look. If you, your background is not known, if your father is not known, there are so many things you're going to be losing in life. But as soon as it is known, who is your father? Several things begin to happen. In Acts chapter 16, verse 37 to 38, something happened there. Paul and Silas were in Macedonia, precisely in the house of Lydia. They preached the gospel. And certain persons were so sad with their spiritual exploits in Macedonia that they stared up the public and said, these guys were preaching heresy, were preaching a culture that was values that were not known to us. What happened? Paul and Silas were locked up, beaten and locked up. But then, they prayed, they sang, and the gates of the prison were opened. The end of the story is that Paul and Silas were released. But then Paul said something. He said, you beat us publicly. Now you want to set us free privily. No, don't you know we're Roman citizens? He, he contended his own rights as a Roman citizen. I want you to understand something about where you're located, your background, and the rights that can be conferred onto you in the spirit realm and in the physical. As soon as the magistrates heard that Paul was a Roman citizen, the word of God says they were afraid. And they came to plead with Paul and Silas to go and leave them alone. Why? Because Paul was born in Tarsus, which was under the Roman Empire. And as a citizen of Rome, you could not be punished, you could not be condemned on hard without any reasons. The word of God says in John chapter 3, verse 18, it says Jesus came not to condemn us. And so as many as believe in him are no longer condemned and are not condemnable. And so we see Paul stressing the fact that, look, this is my background. And his background accorded him rights. Same story in Acts chapter 22, 25 to 28. Paul contempt his own position as a Roman citizen. And as a Roman citizen, you have all the full rights. You have all the full rights. 
Those who know their God, the word of God says in Daniel chapter 11, he said they do what? They make exploits. They grow stronger. Come along with me to look at exactly what happens when one does not know his father. What are the few things? Number one, he becomes a victim of circumstances. If you don't know who your father is, you do not know your rights, you do not know your location, you do not know your background. You become a victim of circumstances. Anything that happens, anything that comes, will go. The Frenchman says, que sera, sera. Oh, whatever comes, comes. It's okay. Whatever may be, let it be. Those are people who do not know their father. Number two, what happens? Such persons, they accept every invitation. Every invitation that comes the way of a man who does not, a woman that does not know his or her father, they accept all invitations. You're called to be somewhere in place B, you're there. You're called to be in place A, you've run back there. You accept every invitation. You might be such, my brother, my sister, I'm coming to you this week by the unction of the Holy Spirit that you are not meant for every invitation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, the word of God says what? It says, come out of them. He said, come out of them. So that God can hear you and accept you. Come out of them. Why? Because we're separated from God. If you're separated from a heavenly father that we call Abba Father. Through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't accept every invitation. Number three. Thing that happens to those who do not know their father. Is that they go anywhere. <laughs> they go anywhere. Those who go anywhere, their bodies, their dead bodies are found everywhere. Can be found anywhere. Can be found anywhere. Samson is an example. When he forgot the fact that he has an anointing upon him, he was killed or he died in a strange circumstance, in a strange place. Are you such that go anywhere? You are found in beer palace. You are found in brothels. You are found in the midst of all sorts of strange people. The word of God is coming to you today. If truly you know your father, you will not be found everywhere. You will not be found anywhere. We need to understand this. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says that he made us kings unto his father. We're peculiar people. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, the word of God says, We're a holy priest would to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God. Number four thing that happens to those who do not know their father is that he or she accepts any name given. Call him any name, he will accept it. Oh, tell the person you're crazy. He laughs over it. Tell him you're a fool. He laughs over it because he does not know his father. Call him any name. Give him any label. Give him any kind of clothing to put on. Babylonian clothes. Clothes that expose themselves. Their integrity. They accept. Give them any gift. They accept. Why? Because they do not know their father. Now briefly, I want to talk about those who know their father. Those things that happen to those who know their fathers, who can vouch for them? Number one is found in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. He said, but the people that know their God will be strong. Strong health-wise, strong physically, strong mentally, strong financially. The reason why you're given funny, funny labels is because you don't know them. your God. The reason why you're always weak is because you don't know your God. You don't know your father. You don't know that your father is called the mighty healer. Perhaps you've heard of him, but you don't know him much. And these are some of the reasons. I'm not saying people 
will from time to time not be weak. The word of God says, well, let the weak say, I am strong. Number two thing that happens to those who know their God, they are not lost totally. The prodigal son knew his father, knew the mind of his father, that if I only return home, my father will still accept me. They are never lost totally. He returned home and his father was ever waiting to receive him back. Do you know the good news and the conclusion to this week's message is that Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, representing the Father, that we cry unto Abba Father, is everything for us. Oh, if you don't have him, you don't have a father. You don't have an insider. And there's no way you can escape from those challenges that you're going through. I come to you again with this message. That John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Verse 18 says, They that believe are not condemned. I want to pray for you, that you will find in Christ Jesus, you find in the Almighty a Father, a Father that can send you teachers, guides, advocates, angels to guide you and protect you. You're running up and down looking for Godfathers who will not serve the situation. Because man, Jeremiah says, was a curse to be he that puts his trust in the arms of flesh. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for all our listeners. As many as are out there desiring that you become their father. Please, Lord, accept them today. Be their father in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to rejoice in you because you are in our midst. Thank you so much. Till we come your way again next week, it's Yusuf Yakub Fisa. Moment of truth. God bless you.